Hi guys, the title of the title you see on the screen today, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll get started. This story begins with a very tragic event, namely, the moment when the daughter of the Marquis Renati went missing. Everyone around was incredibly surprised by this, they could not believe that such a thing could happen at all. But contrary to many expectations, people could not find poor Arabella Renati. There were even rumors that the Marquis and his wife were still looking for their missing daughter even after so much time. Thus, countless numbers of false Arabellas came to the couple's estate in order to be found. However, just as quickly and disappointed, they gave up and returned back. The spouses were beside themselves with grief because they were still unable to find their daughter. They had another daughter. She had dark hair. One day she went into the bedroom to her mother who was sad again and did not leave the lullaby of her other daughter, who had just disappeared. With a trembling voice, she turned to her mother and asked if she really wouldn't go and eat, since it was already quite late. But the woman just came up to the girl. Her name was Anita. She stroked her hair and said that in this place she was just growing up beautifully, surrounded by everyone and beautiful things. But even though the second daughter was nearby, the woman was still interested in how life was going for their poor Arabella. When the girl heard this, she was incredibly surprised and even upset that her mother paid practically no attention to her. After that, the woman turned around and said that they should probably leave so that things wouldn't get any worse. At that time, she was still a child and did not understand why her mother was behaving this way. When she tried to approach her and console her, it only made the woman even more angry. She pulled her daughter's hand away and told her to go away as quickly as possible. Anita was very surprised because her mother never yelled at her. And besides, her hand was now starting to hurt because she had hit it so hard. The girl immediately turned around and began to walk away and her mother, having fallen to the ground, kept repeating Arabella's name. Fortunately, Anita, leaving, almost did not hear what her mother said, and she, in turn, said that everything that Anita could enjoy should belong to Arabella. After losing their poor daughter, the family could not afford to break the line, so they had to have a second child. And this second child was a girl named Anita, who did not grow up happy in a family that, it would seem, should have loved and appreciated her. Anita couldn't understand if her parents really thought that loving a child they had only because they had no other choice would not be a great betrayal of Arabella. In fact, there were absolutely all the people in that house who looked only at Arabella and not at Anita. Everyone simply ignored the existence of the second child. As soon as new clothes arrived, for example, the servants would think about how Arabella should have worn these beautiful dresses. They also reasoned that absolutely any color would suit her beautiful hair, because it was amazing. In fact, Anita, even when she grew up, believed that if there was at least one person who would look only at her, then she would be the happiest in the world. And in the end, this person was found, even though a lot of time had passed. This savior could be the heir to the Grand Duchy of Rishaidi, as well as her only fiancé and lifelong friend. When Anita's parents were completely ignoring her because of the noise with the fake Arabellas, Axel invited her to the Rishadi estate. And it was in that place that she was not a thief who had taken all of Arabella's things, but was the real Anita, just as she was born. However, Anita was not sure whether it was because of her parents' decision or not. But soon, as much as she wanted it, Arabella finally returned to their house. And in order to confirm her identity, the parents used a sacred object that they inherited from the imperial family. And this very object showed that she was the very same real Arabella who had returned to them after 19 whole years. When mother and father saw this, they were all incredibly happy. But Anita, who had already managed to accumulate resentment towards them over so many years, of course, was not happy about such a heroic return. From that moment on, the girl was able to foresee absolutely every step of her parents, and as she expected, they immediately started renovating her room. The man asked if they had brighter colors for the wallpaper because she is a child who has experienced hardships in harsh conditions. Therefore, she needs brighter and warmer colors to feel comfortable. Not only her parents were happy about Arabella's return, but also the servants. 
so they unquestioningly carried out their every order. When Arabella began to settle in little by little, her father was very worried and asked what they should do since she was so thin. It was unbearably painful for him to see what had happened to her. And her mother said that she definitely needs to eat more nutritious food, and so she will ask the doctor to cook as much of everything as possible. Soon after, even the tailor said that he would make Arabella dresses that were much more elegant than Anita's. And her mother said that all the family jewels would go to her because she was their original owner. Ever since Arabella finally came back, her parents wanted to give her all the best things, of course, including things that Anita had never even gotten before. However, it was also the case that the girl was simply taken away. The parents began to wonder if there was any way to break off Anita's engagement to the Grand Duke. And when the girl heard that they wanted to take away from her the only thing that she loved and valued with all her heart, she was horrified. The father then told his wife that it was an engagement which His Excellency had proposed first, so that it would be rather difficult for them to break it off without some scandal. Well then, mother began to get indignant and said that he, you see, simply sent a proposal of marriage to the daughter of the Marquis Renati, and if their Arabella had not disappeared, she would have definitely been the Grand Duke's bride. In a plaintive voice, she told her husband that if he succeeded in breaking off Anita's engagement, the place would naturally immediately belong to their dear Arabella. When she saw no reaction on her husband's face, she began to scream loudly, saying that she wanted their first and most beautiful daughter to have all the joys of this life, no matter what kind they might be. The woman was ready to tear her hair out from such injustice. She said that she considered it disgusting that Anita was going to take away happiness from their dear missing daughter. Then the man tried to calm her down. He hugged her and said that he felt the same way, and also added that he never wanted to connect Anita with the Grand Duke's family. He explained that the status of a duchess was only suitable for Arabella, and therefore they would have to make sure that she would ultimately be happy. He also said that if we consider the question of Anita, then he believes that she will simply help him in the family business, as she has done so far. He said that this will be quite enough for a girl of her level. Soon after Anita heard this, she finally met her potential future groom. But because she was acting more quietly than usual, he suspected something and immediately asked what she was thinking and worrying about, and also added that quite a lot of time had passed since their last meeting. Anita looked at him with a sad look and immediately asked for forgiveness for having behaved perhaps rudely. After that, she immediately explained that she had been a little busy those days, so she apologized for having to refuse meetings that he had actually proposed. They were silent for a while. Then the man, smiling, asked if she had any meetings with anyone other than him, since she had refused and was busy. The girl lowered her head and replied that, of course, this was not so, and that he should not worry. But at that moment, someone suddenly knocked on her door. She asked his forgiveness for disturbing them, and immediately came up to see who had suddenly arrived during the meeting. And when Anita opened the door, she was very surprised, because right in front of her appeared her mother and sister. The woman immediately turned to her daughter and asked her what she thought about introducing Arabella to the Grand Duke of Reshidi. The woman also explained that Arabella was her older sister and said that she had no doubt that the Duke would also be glad to meet and see her. Anita realized at that moment that they would be ready to take absolutely everything from her, if only Arabella would be happy, even that which did not originally belong to her. It didn't matter what happened, but Anita considered Axel to be the one person she would never allow to be taken away from her, so she was even ready to stand up against her family just to stay with him. At that moment, the man saw that she had been standing near the door for a very long time and immediately asked who it was that had come there. Anita smiled and replied that she was asking for forgiveness, and also said that she would go out for a minute, because she needed to talk to someone. After that, she went out and closed the door behind her, without even waiting for his answer. When Mother saw this behavior, she immediately asked what she was doing and how she dared to behave like that. But the girl ignored her words and said that she absolutely did not want to do what she was told. Mother looked at her in surprise and immediately asked what she meant by that. 
Anita then replied in a confident voice that as she had said earlier, she had absolutely no desire to introduce Arabella to Archduke Axelon. Then, moving on to higher notes, she also said that she refused to do this, and they certainly wouldn't be able to convince her otherwise. The mother was incredibly surprised when her daughter answered her like that. For a while, she was even confused and simply kept silent. However, a flood of anger overcame her, and she began to shout at her daughter, saying that she had always been so selfish. Arabella tried to calm her mother down because she knew that she didn't care at all about it, so she didn't see the point in getting so angry about it. But the woman said that she shouldn't worry at all, because Anita deserves to be scolded for her impudence. It's as if she lives to receive punishments and reprimands. Turning back to her second daughter, the mother continued to yell at her, asking how long she was going to behave like this. She also asked, did she really not feel sorry for her sister? Anita answered in a rough voice that, of course, she had no pity for Arabella. The girl also explained that she could not introduce her to the Archduke without the other person's permission. It would be very rude to him, so she was not going to do that. Deep down, the woman knew her daughter was absolutely right, but she didn't want to admit it, so she called her a truly terrible person. She also wondered who Anita was, such a selfish and evil person. She asked if it was really so difficult for her to just introduce her sister to a noble man. She didn't expect anything more. The women continued to argue when suddenly Arabella turned to her mother and asked her not to shout at Anita so loudly. Tears were already welling up in her eyes because she hated such scandals more than anything. At that moment, Arabella found it incredibly difficult to breathe. She began to lose consciousness and eventually fell to the ground. When her mother noticed this, she immediately ran up and managed to grab her at the last moment so the girl did not hit her head. She immediately began to address her daughter and asked her to wake up and under no circumstances die. Mother began to cry again because she was very worried about poor Arabella. Anita stood aside for a while at this point and then said in a quiet voice that she would go and call the doctor. After this, the girl immediately began to run in the other direction to call the doctor, and turning the corner, she suddenly met a maid who was just going in that direction. The maid was incredibly scared when she saw Anita gasping for breath in front of her and immediately asked why she was running and what had happened. The maid was really very worried, and the girl, bringing her breathing back to normal, said that it was necessary to call a doctor immediately. The maid, hearing this, immediately looked at her in surprise and asked why a doctor was needed, and most importantly, who needed it. Anita then looked at her seriously and said that Arabella had fainted opposite the first living room on the first floor, so a specialist needed to be called immediately. When the maid heard this, she became even more frightened, said that this simply could not be, and even dropped the vase of flowers that she was carrying. The girl turned to the other side of the corridor and said that she would be right back, and then left the maid and ran. At that moment, she thought that on that same day, when the doctor examined Arabella, he did not find any health problems in her. Therefore, Anita was very surprised and alarmed. She did not understand what had so suddenly made the girl lose consciousness, and most importantly, what would happen next. But at that moment, when she had already returned to the living room where her fiancé was sitting, she saw that there was no one near the room. Of course, Anita was very angry. She sighed heavily and realized that, apparently, this was the intention from the very beginning. It was indeed so. Axiot continued to sit in the living room and wait for his bride, but next to him sat not she, but a completely different girl. Arabella sat down opposite him, trembling with emotion, and then asked his forgiveness for introducing herself in this way, and added that Anita would be here very soon, so he need not worry. The man was not very interested in this girl, so he said that he would be happy to wait for Anita. Arabella at this point silently began to watch him. She remembered that her mother had said that he was a nobleman with excellent manners, but for some reason she felt very uneasy, even just being in his presence. She immediately thought that everyone must have been very surprised when she fainted, but fortunately, she quickly came to her senses and her mother was immediately there. As soon as the woman saw that Arabella had opened her eyes, she immediately asked how she felt and what had happened to her. 
But the girl ignored her words and immediately asked about Anita as well as where she was. Her mother replied that it was completely unimportant in such a situation and asked how she felt in general. When Arabella replied that she was fine, her mother looked into her eyes with a wild look and said that this was her chance to meet His Majesty. When Arabella heard this, she was very surprised and immediately asked how her sister was. The mother helped the girl to get up and said that her sister would come later, and she just needed to go into the living room. After all, it was not good to leave a guest alone for a long time. That was exactly what Arabella did. But now that she was opposite His Majesty, she even assumed that he was probably angry that she had come to the meeting without an invitation, as Anita had warned. She felt herself starting to choke from her experience and thought that she needed to get away from this place as soon as possible, because there was a chance that she would quickly lose consciousness again. But at that moment, Arabella remembered the words of her mother, who said that she had to make sure that she looked good in front of him, and also the words of her father, who was absolutely sure that the Archduke would like her. Arabella desperately wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. However, she understood that she could not disappoint her parents and let down their hopes. So soon she got hold of her anxiety and, in the calmest voice possible, the girl turned to His Highness and asked for forgiveness for the inconvenience caused. Axion looked very serious. However, in a quiet voice, he replied that she had absolutely no reason to apologize to him, since this was not the first time that the young girl had appeared without warning. When the girl heard this, she began to worry again. She thought that he probably heard the conversation that was taking place behind the door. However, the guy continued talking. He smiled and said that besides everything, Anita would come soon, so there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Arabella, hearing this, was a little calmer but also surprised, because the Archduke seems like a completely different person when he talks about her sister. Anita was standing outside the door at that very moment and did not dare to go inside. She kept thinking about her older sister and understood that she was probably pretending to faint in order to meet Axion. At that moment, the girl remembered her mother's words and did not understand why she should listen to them at all. Of course, Arabella should have the best of everything, according to their parents. Anita understood perfectly well that absolutely all the people who worked and lived in the mansion hated her, as if she had stolen something from Arabella and now had to pay for it. In the end, the girl would probably have to give her sister everything that belonged to her in order for her to be properly accepted into that mansion. Anita opened the door a little at that moment and saw the man sitting in his place. She thought that Axion was the only thing she had. She couldn't believe that she had to give it to her sister and not feel regret. Soon the doors finally opened completely and the man saw his bride first, so he immediately smiled and Arabella immediately jumped to her feet and greeted her. She immediately ran up to her and apologized for probably scaring her by fainting. Anita looked very angry. She thought that Arabella had come to steal everything from her and she was going to resist it. But then suddenly her older sister took her hand and immediately asked where she had been and smiling said that she had been waiting for her with impatience. The girl, when she saw all this, was very surprised and did not understand why Arabella was suddenly behaving like this. She glanced at Axion and was about to turn to her sister and say something, but she quickly interrupted her and in a rough voice asked the girl to immediately leave the room. Arabella, hearing this, was very surprised but at the same time she was glad. She wondered if she could really leave. When she saw the absolutely serious expression on her sister's face, she breathed a sigh of relief and mentally thanked her for it. Of course, Arabella was incredibly scared after meeting the Archduke, but before leaving, she smiled and said that she would not disturb them, and also added that they would see each other later. Anita began to watch her sister as she left and noticed one odd thing namely that Arabella had a very difficult life in the slums. And she herself was the one who lived, needing nothing, in a noble family and a beautiful mansion. However, Arabella was nevertheless more joyful and innocent than she was. As soon as Anita approached and closed the door so that no one would disturb them anymore, she immediately turned to the man and apologized for her parents' rudeness. But Axion seemed completely calm. He smiled and said that everything was fine 
and that she shouldn't worry. It was no problem at all for him. But at that moment, she suddenly began to look very sad, and hanging her head down, said that it would be better for him to leave immediately, and also asked his forgiveness for the fact that everything turned out this way. Axion immediately stood up from his seat. After that, he came closer to the girl and said that he wanted her to come to him next time. Smiling, he asked if she would be against it, and also if it would not be too difficult for her. Anita, hearing her dear friend say that she had the opportunity to leave the estate and spend time with him, was very surprised. Axion extended his hand and said that he would send her an invitation the next day in the afternoon. Anita immediately smiled and said that she would definitely accept it. In fact, after Arabella's arrival, the girl became completely unnecessary in this mansion, so it will be very pleasant for her to visit Lakata. Soon after the Archduke had left, the whole family gathered around the dinner table to eat. The father immediately turned to his eldest daughter and asked if she liked the food the chef had prepared. Arabella, smiling, immediately said that everything was really very tasty and also thanked him and her mother for it. Her mother still looked very worried, so she told her to eat as much as possible because she had lost a lot of weight since her disappearance and she definitely needed to regain a few extra pounds. Anita, who was sitting next to her sister, began to eat the food on her plate. There was only one very light salad, despite the fact that there were many types of fatty and well-fried meat on the table. When Arabella noticed this, she immediately turned to her and asked if she really didn't like steak, since she only had one salad on her plate. She also suggested that the girl was on a diet, and objected that she didn't need it at all, because she was already very slim, and her figure was simply magnificent. The girl didn't have time to answer her older sister because their mother spoke up and, turning to Arabella, said that Anita always eats little. After that, she stood up a little from her seat and said that it was much more important for Arabella to eat more in order to get back to normal weight. The father agreed with his wife and said that she should not worry about Anita at all, but rather eat as much as possible and gain weight so that she would soon be a beautiful girl. Arabella was surprised by such words but asked them for forgiveness and said that she would definitely try to gain weight for them. But the mother, sitting back down, said that she didn't need to apologize at all because she was not guilty of anything. And the man replied that it was all their fault because they had eaten their fill while she had been starving all this time. After that, he looked sternly at his youngest daughter and asked if he was telling the truth. Anita didn't respond to this, she just continued to eat her dish in small pieces. Then, after a short silence, he turned again to his daughter and said that he had heard how she treated Arabella in the drawing room. The man raised his voice and said that she had been very rude to her older sister. He said that he was very upset that she had lived in this mansion all this time and enjoyed everything. So he did not understand how she could not feel sorry for her sister who had gone through so many hardships while being away from home. Anita didn't respond to this, finishing her salad. She started wiping her mouth with a napkin and said that she could understand why the two of them felt guilty about Arabella. However, she asked that they not even think about taking it out on her and trying to accuse her of anything. When the father heard these words from his daughter, he became even more angry. He started yelling at her and told her to watch her words right in front of her older sister. Arabella at this point began to feel very uncomfortable because she believed that it was because of her that her sister was being scolded and she generally did not like scandals. But at that moment, Anita got up from the table and said that she had spent enough time with her family so she would go. When her mother heard this, she became furious and immediately asked her daughter what she was saying. But the girl didn't answer her. She just headed towards the exit to leave this terrible situation as quickly as possible. Then her mother started yelling at her and asked if she was really leaving unceremoniously in the middle of a family dinner. The woman didn't understand how she could do that. Anita did not react to these cries. She just walked further and further away. Then her father could not stand it. He got very angry and hitting his hands on the table, loudly called her name. Arabella, who was about to take a tartlet at that moment, accidentally touched the plate with her hand and dropped it on the floor, flinching from her father's scream. 
When her mother noticed this, she immediately turned to her husband and told him not to shout so loudly in front of Arabella because it was clearly not good for her and she could get very scared. Arabella at that moment immediately reached for the plate she had dropped and with tears in her eyes asked for forgiveness, saying that it was her fault. But the man replied that everything was fine and she didn't have to worry because they certainly weren't angry with her and it wasn't her fault. He also said that he was just very worried that their dear Bella might get hurt because of Anita, so she shouldn't pay any attention to her words at all. The girl just doesn't know what she's saying, that's all. He also said that Anita has been very picky since childhood and loves to show her bad character. Arabella at that moment looked at her sister, who had already gone out the door and slammed it behind her. She felt very sorry for her sister. But at that moment, the woman turned to her husband and whispered to him why he allowed Anita to behave so arrogantly. He became very angry, then turned to the maid and asked her to tell Anita that she should come to his office in exactly one hour and under no circumstances be late. Anita at that moment went to the library. Of course, the maid had already given her the message, and she understood that she had to come to her father in an hour. However, it would take at least two hours to calm his beloved daughter down, so she decided to read a book for a while to take her mind off the whole tense situation. She picked up a book that told the story of the founding of the Empire. It was rather boring for many, but Anita was delighted when she read it. And all because it mentioned Lake Alkente. It was the lake where the Divine Beast appeared, which helped the first Emperor found their empire. Thinking about this lake, the girl began to feel much better, since even one thought about this place filled her with strength and energy. It actually reminded her of the person she first met there. While there, she met a boy whose eyes were so blue that they even surpassed the legendary lake. In fact, this event happened seven years ago. The girl was sitting at her mother's very boring tea party. There were a lot of unfamiliar women around who were talking about everything under the sun, but at the same time about absolutely nothing. Anita was only 10 years old at the time, and she sat with a cup of tea an absolutely stony expression on her face, simply listening to what the women were talking about. In fact, mothers came to this tea party with their daughters, so a separate table was made for the children. And after some time, a girl named Rachel Sawyer, who was the eldest daughter of Countess Sawyer, said that Renardi was constantly looking at the lake, so she thought that Anita was completely bored in their company. The girl immediately said that this was absolutely not true, and replied that she was very interested. But Rachel asked in a rude voice what she had just talked to her about in that case. Anita immediately smiled and thought that she must have noticed that Anita wasn't paying attention to the conversation, so she decided to set her up like that. But she told the lady that they had been talking about the name of the flower she had inquired about, and it was called Lovena. Anita explained that it was a flower with a strong scent and a beautiful appearance. She also said that she really hoped that she had been useful to her in the end. Even though Rachel didn't like the girl, she knew her manners. So she politely thanked her for telling her about it. After that, the conversation turned to something else. And Anita kept thinking about when this tea party would end, because she was not interested at all. The garden, which was located next to Lake Alkinti, was known as a meeting place for the nobility. Noble ladies often held tea parties there so Anita was also invited there. Of course, the girl understood that they did this for a specific purpose. Namely, through her, they wanted to get closer to her family. As the conversations continued, the girl wondered whether she should invite everyone to go for a walk to the lake. But then she realized that if this man was losing consciousness now, then when they arrived, he would definitely drown. She felt some strange energy on the other side. Anita knew she couldn't tell the others how she knew about the drowning man. So in this case, she just had to act. The girl stood up from her place and said that she would look at the lake and return immediately. Some strange voice began to whisper to her about where the drowning man was, and she followed him. When Anita finally came to the shore, she saw no one. As she expected, the man had already drowned. She began to take off her shoes and thought that people would certainly know where she was if they saw her shoes. This voice that was communicating with her was, of course, against the girl going into the water and trying to do anything, but it was simply powerless. 
Anita jumped into the lake at that very moment and found herself almost at the very bottom. Then she saw a beautiful golden-haired girl going to the bottom. She immediately swam towards her and, grabbing her hand, tried to lift her up, but realized that she could not pull her out alone. Then she wondered if there was anyone else on this lake who could help her. This girl kept going down, and Anita with her, because she just couldn't pull her out. She realized that at this rate she would just drown too. But at that moment, something strange happened. It was as if something fast rushed past them and left a column of water behind it. And after some time, she opened her eyes and realized that she was on the shore. Anita then believed that they were saved by that very column of water. Of course, this was a very incomprehensible phenomenon, and at such a young age, she had no choice but to simply accept what had happened. It was a lake that was associated with the legend of the founding of the empire, so she didn't believe that it could actually be true. However, at that moment, many people ran up to them, including the boy. He told his servants who came for him that he did not even know how he could thank this young miss. After that, he bowed and said that his name was Axion Lakeith, and he thanked her for saving his mother. Anita was a little surprised after everything that happened, and did not understand how this was even possible. However, she said that she is always happy to help people. It was then that her very first meeting with Axion took place. She was sure already in adulthood that she did not even say her name then. However, Axion sent her a letter as if he already knew everything perfectly well at that moment. And it was from that moment that their strong and very wonderful friendship began. At the moment when Anita finished reading the book and reminiscing about the past, she looked at her watch and noticed that she already had to go to her father. Without thinking twice, she immediately went down to the first floor to go to his office. From the open door, she heard someone talking. It was the voice of her mother and father. The woman told him that Arabella had fainted that day, and the doctor said he did not know the reason. She also said that he should hurry up and break off the engagement, because if rumors spread that she was ill, then it would be simply impossible to betroth Bella to the Archduke. The man took his woman by the hand and asked if it was true that in any case Arabella would be able to be with the prince, so they should not worry. The woman, when she heard about this, was very surprised and asked, does he really mean that same prince who is very cold to women? And what's more, she asked if there was any guarantee that they would become part of His Majesty's family, because she had already begun to doubt it very much. After that, she said in a very rude voice that she definitely couldn't be with him, because Arabella should be adored as much as possible. The woman said that this applies not only to her parents, but the same should be true for marriage. The man, after listening to her, immediately tried to calm her down and asked how about highlighting Anita in the eyes of the Empress. If she became a candidate for Crown Princess, it would be easier for them to break off the engagement with the Archduke. He explained that it was not at all necessary for her to become Crown Princess, as that would simply be an excuse to break their commitments. When the woman heard this idea, she thought about it carefully and said that it was really wonderful. That was what they had to do. Anita, hearing all this, was furious. She could not believe that this was really the only value she represented for her family, but now she began to think a little. She remembered perfectly well that it was she who saved the Duchess that day, so she doesn't understand why all this applies to Renard. Anita didn't understand why everyone around her decided that she would obey only her family, why she should do what they told her. But at that moment, the girl suddenly realized she began to grin and thought that it was all because they did not consider her part of the Renardi family. She was completely different from her mother and father. And because of this, many rumors appeared in society when she was just born. The girl started to go back. She didn't even go to her father. She thought that since Arabella came back, the situation had become even worse. As soon as she went downstairs, she heard the maids talking about Lady Anita and finding the whole situation strange. One of the maids replied that Lady Arabella was similar to the Marquis's account, unlike Lady Anita, so everyone considered it very suspicious. The maid was so engrossed in her gossip that she didn't even notice Anita approaching them. She said that no one knew. Maybe she wasn't a noblewoman at all. 
But at that moment, the girl opened her eyes and saw the lady right in front of her. The maid was very frightened by her reaction, and Anita asked in a completely icy voice how she dared to say such a thing. The maid immediately said that she had misunderstood and that it was not so at all, but the woman was not going to listen to her. She told her to leave the house immediately. The girl also said that she would tell her mother herself that she had thrown out an ill-mannered servant who gossiped about her masters. The maid immediately said that she had made a mistake and understood her guilt. She said that she absolutely should not have said such a thing and asked the girl for forgiveness. But it was all useless, because Anita had already left. In fact, more and more people began to doubt her position. And if this continues, Arabella will simply take everything from poor Anita. She will take her place, her duties, and even Axion. And the parents just control them like puppets to make sure everything goes as it should. But at that moment, the girl was so angry that she was ready to move mountains. She thought that they would definitely not be able to do anything, because she would not allow it under any circumstances. She would no longer allow anyone to use her as a thing. And from now on, she was going to defend her rights and property. Soon after, Anita returned to her room. She was still thinking about many things, sitting by the window and looking at the night distance. Suddenly, someone knocked on her door. She immediately said that she could come in, and a maid ran in. She turned to her mistress and said that Lord Rick Elmanto of the Lakade Knighthood had arrived. This girl's name was Hari, and she was Anita's personal servant. She was the only one who treated her kindly in that horrible and hypocritical mansion. She supposed that it was probably because she was constantly rewarding her financially. However, it didn't matter. The main thing was that the girl was at least a little friendly. And at that moment, she took out one very beautiful ornament for Hari, saying that she had done a great job and said that it was her gift for her. She asked the girl to use it if necessary. The maid immediately thanked her mistress for such a wonderful gift and thought that, as expected, she had made the right choice and was proud that she ended up staying with Mistress Anita. If she had followed the other servants to Mistress Arabella, she would never have been able to receive such a beautiful and expensive gift that the mistress gave her. Compared to the naive Mrs. Arabella, Mrs. Anita was much better in Hari's opinion. She thought that if the girl had grown up in poverty, then this could explain her resourcefulness. However, Mrs. Anita, on the contrary, must behave like a flower in a greenhouse. So Harry thought it was all very strange. Soon, when she went out to change the flowers in her room, she was a little upset. She didn't understand why the mistress hadn't patted her head that day, and she had been waiting for it. At this very moment, the lady's guest was already sitting in the living room and expecting her to arrive soon. Anita finally showed up. Upon seeing the man, she immediately smiled and greeted Lord Elmont, saying that she was very glad to see him. The man himself blossomed when he saw her and asked if she had chewed well since they hadn't seen each other for a long time and he didn't know anything. In fact, this man was Rick Elmont. He was the vice commander of the Knights of the Duchy of Lakeith. Anita came closer to him and said that she had heard about his return from the north, but she could not imagine that he would want to visit her personally. At that moment, he handed her a piece of paper, and she said that he could have simply sent a servant since it was only a matter of sending one invitation. One Korean woman, a little embarrassed, said that he came in person only to see her because he had missed her quite a bit during this time. Anita immediately giggled and thanked him for such nice words. After that, she sat down to continue the conversation with him. The girl immediately asked if he had been able to successfully complete his business in the North. Rick, smiling, also sat down in his place. The man said that fortunately, everything ended well for him because this time there were only minor problems so he didn't even have to strain himself too much. But at that moment, his face suddenly became very serious, and he said that, nevertheless, he still could not get used to the cold that was there. From his expression, one could think as if he felt this cold right then and there on himself. This made Anita feel a little creepy, but she understood perfectly well why he felt this way, because the cold north is very famous in the Empire. In fact, even in midsummer, the weather there is incredibly wintry and cold due to the barren land. Not even crops grow there. 
However, the precious minerals buried in the ground caused chaos among the people. Initially, it was the responsibility of the imperial family to solve this problem. However, at the time, they were busy sending the ducal knights to the north, so someone else had to take care of it. When Anita was a little younger, she would talk to Axion and ask why he should just obediently follow the emperor's orders. She thought he could have just given up and stayed home, but the man said he had something he wanted to find in the north, so he didn't mind being sent there. With a smile on his face, the boy said that he could do whatever he wanted and escape from the emperor's suspicions, so he didn't have a single reason to refuse such a wonderful chance. Anita immediately thought that perhaps Axion was still searching for something by sending knights there, but she did not pursue this thought for long. While drinking tea, the girl smiled and told Rick that she was very glad that he had managed to return to the capital before the onset of winter, because now he would probably be heading back to the duchy and would finally be able to warm up. The man laughed at her joke, but said that unfortunately it was not entirely true because he needed to report on affairs in the north. But at that very moment, their conversation was suddenly interrupted by a voice coming from the corridors. This voice was shouting loudly, asking, Has a guest from the Lakeith family really arrived? The man said that she should have reported it to him immediately, since it was probably too late now, but she also asked the maid to knock on the door and let her in quickly. The maid had no choice but to obey her mistress. She knocked and, turning to Anita, said that Madame was looking for her and, of course, her mother was involved. She sighed heavily and allowed her mother to come in. Then the doors opened and the woman sighed heavily. There was great surprise on her face. And turning to Anita, she asked why she had not told her in advance that she would have guests, since she did not want to disturb her at all. The girl understood perfectly well that her mother was now pretending that she knew nothing so as not to put herself in a bad light, but, as always, to blame her. However, at that moment, Rick stood up and approached the woman. He immediately bowed, kissed her hand, and greeted Marquise Renark. After that, he told his name and also his rank. When the woman heard this, she was very surprised and asked if he really was the vice commander of the knights. Rick replied that it was indeed so. Then the woman began to sit down next to her daughter and said that she had never imagined that he would come in person to deliver the invitation to tea. She also said that it must have caused him a lot of inconvenience because he was very tired after his mission, and all this was very inconvenient. Rick, hearing these words, immediately became wary. He said that this was not so at all because any knight of Lakeith would want to do as he did. He also clarified that he was talking specifically about Milady Anita's visit. The woman immediately felt uncomfortable and said that she had no idea that her daughter had such a close relationship with the Knights of the Duchy. But Rick then, smiling, replied that this concerned not only the Knights, but the entire Lakeith family, since Milady had saved the life of the head of the family, so they simply owed everything to her. The woman suddenly laughed and asked if he was really talking about that case from eight years ago and also said that she had heard that it was the doctor's merit and not Anita's at all. When Rick heard this, he was beside himself with rage. He did not understand how she could say such a thing. Then the woman, completely ignoring his expression, looked at the table and saw the envelope. She wondered, could this really be the invitation? After this, she took it immediately into her hands without permission and said that she was very interested in what the Duke had sent. However, Anita managed to react in time. She took the envelope first and, asking her mother for forgiveness, said that she had not yet read it herself. And that's why she thinks it would be completely inappropriate if someone opened it faster than the owner. Therefore, without thinking twice, she immediately opened the envelope and felt the incredibly pleasant aroma of fresh roses. When she took the paper in her hands, she immediately smiled because she realized that Axion had put rose petals in the invitation, and this was very thoughtful, in her opinion, on his part. After that, she immediately began to read. There he addressed her and said that he would very much like to invite her to tea in a week in the garden of the Duchy's residence. The man wrote that he would be incredibly happy if she really accepted his invitation. Anita immediately became a little embarrassed 
so she had a slight blush on her cheeks, but she turned to Rick and asked him to tell him that she would definitely come. The man said that he understood her perfectly well and also added that he would definitely do it. Mother at that moment sat, watching all this very quietly, and thought only about the fact that she had to somehow push Arabella to this tea party. The woman believed that if the Duke saw her, he would immediately understand that she was much better than Anita. So the woman immediately began to play her role. She turned to her daughter and said that she was very worried about Arabella. Then she turned her gaze to the Lord and asked if he knew about it. Without waiting for his answer, the woman said that Anita was able to socialize in society quite early. But Arabella, unfortunately, was not. The girl sat silently and watched everything that was happening. She couldn't believe that her mother was actually trying to marry Arabella off to Axion, but she also thought that this was a dream that would never come true. So she'd better just forget about it. Anita turned to her mother and said in a cold voice that she did not mind if Arabella went with her. However, she was not sure that she herself would like the idea. Mother, as soon as she heard about this, immediately beamed with joy and said that she would definitely like it. After that, she turned her gaze to the Lord and asked if everything was okay in this case. Rick was a little surprised by how things were being handled there. However, he decided not to interfere and said that if this is what my lady really wanted, then it was entirely possible to implement it. He also said that it was time for him to go back to the fortress so he asked if it would be scary if he left first. They immediately said that there was no problem with that, of course, and wished the Lord a good journey. And her mother said that she would definitely take care of Anita so he could go with peace of mind. As soon as the door closed behind the man, the mother immediately looked at her daughter very seriously and said in a voice as cold as winter that they needed to talk. After that, she asked, did she really fire the servants that day on her own whim? Without waiting for an answer, the mother immediately began to shout loudly at her, saying that among them was her maid of honor. So she asked what she was trying to achieve by doing something like that. Anita looked calmly at her mother and said that they were spreading empty rumors, so one cannot trust and entrust work to those who use their tongue carelessly. Mother completely ignored her sound arguments and said that nevertheless, she could not just suddenly take and fire them. But the girl behaved surprisingly calmly and said that it was all for her own sake because she also hated them and they revealed the affairs of the mansion to anyone so she did not consider it a big mistake and if anything she would have done the same for some time the woman tried to find some arguments for all this but could not come up with anything so sighing heavily she said that they had better skip this point because there was something more important than empty squabbles Anita was a little wary when she heard this and immediately asked what it was about. The woman smiled and told her daughter that Arabella would have an audience with Her Majesty on the 10th, so she thought the girl should go with her. Mother explained that Arabella did not have enough experience in tea drinking yet, so it would be very difficult for her alone, and it would be much more convenient if they were present and, if necessary, guided her on the right path. When the girl heard this, she immediately understood that if the rumor about the wedding surfaced, they wanted to set her up instead of their ideal first daughter. If the Empress makes her move, it will be very easy to separate her and Axion. In that case, Arabella will have no reason to marry the flighty prince. Anita felt abandoned. Then she asked her mother if they shouldn't ask Her Majesty's permission first, because it would be very impolite to do so. But mother, rising from her seat, said that the Empress had already given her permission and also changed the subject to her engagement. The girl began to feel even worse. She was already clutching her dress because she simply could not stand it all. However, her mother looked at her daughter with a cold gaze and asked if she understood that this was rightfully Bella's place. So she advised Anita not to be so presumptuous and to do the right thing for her own good. At this very time, in the dukedom of Lakeith, Axion met with his mother. She said that she heard that he visited Anita's mansion. The man said that it was indeed so. Then she asked in a sad voice if he was still the same. And the guy sighed heavily and said that everything was absolutely correct. 
Absolutely nothing had changed there. When the woman heard this, she became even more upset. With a heavy sigh, she said that apparently this family was not even going to change in any way. Then she remembered moments from the past when Anita was present in their house several years ago and said that after reaching adulthood, she wanted to go on a long journey. When the woman heard this, she realized that the girl apparently just wanted to break ties with her family in this way. But given the treatment given to Anita at the Marquis's residence, it was understandable. So the woman asked the girl why she didn't stay with them in Lakeed until she came of age. Anita thanked her from the bottom of her heart for the offer, but said that she could not give up her family, no matter how much she wanted to. In fact, no matter how many times the woman proposed to her, they always refused, so she could not force herself on them anymore. But this time, when she met Axion, she said that she should have saved her earlier. The man looked at her in surprise and asked if she was really that worried about the girl. His mother, hanging her head, said that she rather regretted that she could not bring Anita to Lakeith at that moment, because then her life would certainly have turned out differently. That same evening, in Anita's room, the girl sat completely alone and ate dinner because she did not intend to be there with her family. She noticed that lately she had absolutely no appetite, and even her small portions were difficult for her to finish. Until yesterday, she had thought that the family gathered together at the table for Arabella's sake. But now she did not think so at all. At that moment, someone suddenly knocked on her door. Anita, wiping her mouth with a napkin, immediately allowed them to enter. Then a man entered her room. He bowed and said that the head of the family was waiting for her in his office. This man was Philippe Renati, and he was the butler. Anita immediately stood up from her seat and said that she would go there. But at that moment, she suddenly looked at Philip and saw some strange expression on his face. So the girl, alert, asked, Is there really something else? The man was silent for a while. Then, lowering his head, he said in a quiet voice that the master had called her so that she would immediately return to her household duties. Anita was a little surprised to hear this, but said she thought he was right. But at that moment, the butler began to object. He said that this was too much, because the gentleman did not understand at all that the lady was still very young and was not obliged to do all this. But the girl suddenly smiled very slyly and said that she would go there anyway, all because she simply needed to move on. As she passed the man, she asked him what he thought her father would do if he heard him say such a thing. Before she walked out the door, she smiled and said that he would be fired without severance pay, so he would have to be careful what he said in the future. The man sighed heavily and looked at the lady. He felt very sorry that everyone was treating her like that, because he understood that she didn't deserve it. In fact, in such a situation, he simply hopes that he will not be thrown out, and that's all. And this, of course, is for his own good, but also for the good of Lady Anita. At this moment, the girl had already come to her father's office, in which many papers were scattered everywhere. He told the girl that these were documents that she would have to sort out. He also added that if she worked constantly without leaving her room, she would be able to finish them in three days. Anita was not at all surprised by this request. She thought that ever since Arabella had returned, he had decided to hinder her social activities in every possible way. And now he talks to her in such a tone as if the whole problem is in Anita. The man demanded a lot from his daughter and insisted that she unquestioningly do everything he wants. In fact, Anita began helping her family run their business when she was only 12 years old. Then she realized that they didn't need Renardi at all, so she decided to leave the estate as soon as she became an adult. But no matter how much she wanted to isolate herself from everyone, she still felt like she had to do her job. And that's why she started working hard, doing everything her parents told her to do, even though she also wanted to have a childhood. Then suddenly the father sternly asked why she wasn't answering him, and also said that absolutely anyone could quickly cope with this work. So she also has to meet the deadlines that he gives her, but then suddenly she smiled and said that since it's all complicated, he's entrusting it to her. She smiled and said that because if these documents were so easy to sort out, he would have done everything himself and not dumped it all on her. The man got angry and started yelling at her 
and said that she had to study in order to succeed in anything. And then he asked her if she wasn't planning on running the household in Lakeith. She replied that her mother, as mistress of the Renarty household, didn't even touch the housework, so she wondered why it should be any different for her. The man got so angry that he even slammed his fist on the table so hard that all the papers flew in all directions. He told her to stop whining already because she was 17 years old, so she should also take care of her family. But she replied that nothing obliged her to do so. Unlike her father, Axion did not need her to take care of him. The man, hearing this, was very surprised and asked what she was saying. And the girl answered that he was responsible and knew the duties of the head of the family. So she told her father to do his job himself as the true head of the family and not dump it all on his daughter. She turned around and started to walk away. Then the man yelled at her, asked her to stop behaving like that, and also said that she had crossed the line. He talked about her going back to her room and thinking about it carefully. And Anita, walking out the door, smiled and said that she had already gone back there so he didn't have to worry. Then the door slammed shut and the man was beside himself with anger. He considered her very impudent and did not understand how much longer he would have to endure all this insolence. A whole week had passed since then, and Anita, together with her sister, was heading to the Archduke's mansion. The girl, of course, thought that she would simply accompany her sister there. However, her mother insisted that she remain nearby the whole time. The woman said that Bella might faint again, so she had to stay close all the time and take good care of her. Of course, Anita hoped that this would not happen, because she did not know how to act in such a case. At that moment, she was suddenly interrupted from her thoughts. Of course, it was Bella. She looked very scared and turned to her. But she couldn't say anything. Anita started to get irritated by it all, so she said that if a girl wants to say something, she should speak for it. Arabella looked very frightened and was gathering courage to speak to her sister. Anita at that moment began to wonder if she would be able to say anything before they reached the mansion. But soon the girl plucked up courage and said that she had spoken with her mother and wanted her and the Archduke to be happy. She explained that the girl was her sister, so she could not interfere with her happiness and well-being. Anita, hearing this heart-rending speech, asked if she really was saying that she was her sister. Arabella, smiling, said that of course she was, and she was very glad that they were now together. The girl also said that even if they quarrel, she really wants them to always find a common language and be able to make peace. Bella's sister knew that this was of course impossible, and then she asked if she had ever had a relationship like this. Arabella said that she had a family who took her from the slums and raised her. Her father said that they were in a difficult situation, so he sent them money so she still worries about them very much and hopes that everything will be fine with them. Anita suddenly became very serious. She understood that it would be just wonderful if everything her father said was really true. However, Arabella will have to understand sooner or later that their father is a completely bad person. But the girl continued to beam with joy. She said that in any case her sister should not worry because she did not want to get engaged to the Archduke at all. Anita, lowering her head, asked if she had ever told her mother what she really thought. Her sister, hearing this, was very surprised and asked what she meant. Then she asked if she had told her maid about it. The girl began to get very worried and said that it was not so at all. Anita sighed heavily at this point and said that she thought they were unhappy about this. But she didn't even tell anyone anything. And then she asked her sister how she thought they would know what was in her mind if she didn't say it. So she asked Arabella to tell her how they were supposed to guess what she felt, thought, and wanted. But the girl did not have time to answer because the carriage suddenly stopped and the coachman said that they had arrived. Anita, not having waited for anything from her sister, simply got out of the carriage and Arabella remained sitting there as if she had been lowered into water. The girl's face turned completely white. She felt very uncomfortable because she understood that this was really her fault. By that time, they had finally managed to meet with Axion, and the three of them went to the Archduke's garden. Arabella walked a little ahead of her sister, and looking around said that the garden was really incredibly beautiful. 
She had not expected to see such power. Axion came closer to her, and smiling, said that if he had known that the weather would be so good that day, he would have even invited them to Lake Alkente. But the girl replied that she felt good in the garden. Then she turned around and said that the flowers that grew there were simply magnificent. Then she asked the Archduke if she could smell them. The man said that of course she could smell them, because that was the most important thing about flowers. Anita was behind them and was very angry, because the scent of the lavender flowers can be too strong for Arabella, so she had to be very careful. But then suddenly Bella sat up and began to smell these beautiful white flowers. Her face suddenly became very surprised and she even felt somehow strange. However, smiling, the girl turned to the Archduke and said that they had a very pleasant aroma. Axion, smiling, asked if she really thought so. The girl said that it was so. She had never tried anything like that before. But Anita, despite standing behind, immediately noticed that her face had turned very pale and also asked if everything was okay with Arabella. But before she could ask this question, Arabella suddenly lost consciousness and fell to the ground. Some time passed since then. The girl was moved to the guest bedroom so that she could rest and come to her senses. Axion sat next to her the whole time and waited for the moment when she would wake up. Soon, Arabella finally began to wake up. She was looking up somewhere when she suddenly heard someone's voice. He asked how she was feeling. The girl did not expect to hear a man's voice in the bedroom, so she even jumped in surprise. She looked at the Archduke in surprise and asked what he was doing there. But the man ignored her question and asked if the girl was okay at all. Arabella replied that she was fine and immediately asked where she was and why she was lying in the bedroom right next to him. The man replied that she had been unconscious for a long time, so he carried her to this room. When Arabella heard about this, she was very surprised and asked if she had really fainted again. Axion didn't really like repeating everything over and over again. However, he said that it was so and asked if she was in any pain. Bella replied that she was fine and then asked what had happened and where her sister was. The man, turning away, said that she was talking to the doctor about her condition. So she did not need to worry. She would be back very soon, and they would meet. Arabella said that she understood everything, and then she began to feel all the embarrassment and awkwardness of this situation. She really did not want it to happen like this. She wanted to say something to the Archduke, but she saw his imperturbable face, and the way he looked at the door from which Anita was supposed to appear. The girl immediately remembered her mother's words, who said that he thought very highly of her. But Bella realized that everything was not so. The Archduke looks with great warmth at only one person, namely Anita, and he becomes completely different when the girl is nearby. Arabella knew that her sister was a very nice girl. Although she looked cold, she was not like that at all in her soul. She realized that this whole situation did not show her in a good light at all, and she thought that she did not want things to turn out this way. However, unfortunately, she could not change anything. After some time, she finally turned to the Archduke and, lowering her head, said that she really liked Anita, and that's why she wants her sister to be truly happy. Axion watched the girl's reaction and how embarrassed she was in surprise. But Arabella then spoke loudly and said that she very much hoped that he would be able to give her the happiness that she deserved more than anyone else. 